I don't know where I was or what I was doing when the YouTube algorithm suggested this video but one look at the thumbnail was enough to get me hooked what video am I talking about? I don't have pretty privilege and that sucks this is an attention grabbing title and I just had to click on it on further digging I found it's by Stephanie Comfort she's a school teacher originally from Houston and in this video she talks about her dating and relationship experiences as a black woman living in LA to me I just could not not click and watch as well as there being support for Stephanie and some positivity that's come out as a result of her video there's also been a lot of negative opinions and criticism these criticisms fall into a few categories and I've made some notes of my phone The first thing that I've seen people come out with is that they were actually doubting what Stephanie had to say, almost as if she was making up what she was talking about, not getting attention or not being noticed by men. It's one thing if Stephanie had said quite vague statements about not feeling attracted. She was quite specific in her video. This is why I'm a bit surprised that people are still questioning what she went through. In the video she talked about her birthday and how she did all the things that people do when they want to be seen as attractive. She did a hairstyle, she put makeup on, she put on what she thought was an attractive dress and yet she still didn't get the outcome that she would have liked. And people are arguing about well maybe you didn't do this or you didn't do that. My response to that is even if you don't agree with what she did, you cannot deny that she's putting effort and she's given specific examples of her at least trying to go the extra mile. I'm not going to come and question that, oh, did that really happen, did that not? That is one of the worst things you can do to somebody when they're talking about what they went through. If I'm gonna take it all the way there, it's like, you know, when black people talk about racism to white people or people of other races and then those people have the gumption to question what you went through. Or when women talk about experiencing sexual assault or inappropriate behavior from men and then other men chime in trying to question or make you doubt what you're saying happened. If that's her experience living, working, dating in LA, then that's her experience. End of. The second part of this criticism is even people questioning the concept of pretty privilege and doubting that it exists. It was quite funny to see the amount of excuses and things that people would throw out there to try and invalidate what Stephanie is saying. If you're watching this video and you don't know what pretty privilege is or you're questioning if it's a real thing, I just want to set this and make this clear. Yes, pretty privilege exists. There is research to show that this is a real thing. So what is pretty privilege? What does it actually mean? It's this idea that purely on the basis of your physical attractiveness you get some unintended benefits and these benefits can be anything from better jobs, more promotions, you're much more likely to be picked during interview, you are more likely to be seen as more socially aware, you're much more trusted, you get preferential treatment and the obvious fact of more success in attracting other partners when it comes to relationships and dating. And here's the thing, this is all happening before you've even opened your mouth, said anything or done anything, that you're automatically given all these benefits and you're seen in a positive way compared to somebody that's less conventionally attractive. Now, why is it such a problem? The problem is in the fact that it's a privilege that hasn't been earned. You don't choose your genetics, you don't choose what race or ethnicity you are, and to a greater or lesser extent, you don't choose your facial features either. You don't choose whether you're blonde, blue eyes, you don't choose whether you're dark haired, ginger, none of that is within your control. So the fact that there are a group of people who are benefiting as a result of something that they were born with and the fact that you won out in the genetic lottery is unfair. Especially when it comes to things like job interviews, promotions, 
things that have an impact on your long-term future and success. So why do people deny pretty privilege exists? We know that it's wrong to judge people on their race, their gender, their religion, sexuality. We know that it's wrong and there are laws to protect this from happening. So we all like to think of ourselves as being principled people that give people the best of ourselves and that we don't judge other people because we don't like to be on the receiving end of that and we don't want to be judged especially for something as superficial as the way we look. The actual fact is that there is a dissonance between what we think of ourselves and how often we project ourselves out there. A lot of times we're making these judgments subconsciously. So whenever something comes up or something challenges our opinion on these things, the automatic response is to, oh no, I don't do that. No, she's lying. Oh no, that's not true. I'm gonna be honest and say that I do. When I go out, I look at people, depending on what they look like or things like that, I do form certain judgments and this is normal but we also have to be aware that our biases and the way that we make these judgments can also impact our behavior towards other people point of it is not to make everyone feel like i'm a horrible person or so i'm doing something wrong it's just to make you pause and think and just be aware that sometimes even when we don't mean to do it we are doing it and just to challenge ourselves to do better. The next thing I noticed about some of the criticisms that were coming back from this video is that people were starting to almost blame her for wanting to be noticed by the opposite sex and to be seen as attractive as if it was somehow shallow or superficial to want to go out and get attention from the opposite sex. This I'm going to just unpack a little bit. Is it really such a bad thing that a woman who wants to enter into a romantic relationship wants to also get some sort of attention from the people that she desires? And if it is, somebody explain why that's the case. I started to think about this specific thing and why it's so problematic. As long as she's not harming anyone or she's doing something that's illegal to get this attention, if it's not causing any harmful after effect, why is it such a bad thing? I just see it as her being refreshingly honest. I'm a woman, I would like to get into a romantic relationship with a man. Why would I not want to get attention from the group of people that I would like to attract? Everybody likes to feel wanted, loved, adored, admired from time to time. We're human beings and we're social. Part of what we do is that we do it for the approval of other people. Otherwise, nobody would ever shower, nobody would ever do their hair, the makeup industry would fold overnight. Yes, I admit that some people do take this to extremes and they go completely over and above to appease to men or they center their whole lives and existence around approval from other people. To my, my own eyes, I've not seen any evidence of that from that video. So I, I think people are jumping the gun and jumping to conclusions and making her feel bad for just expressing what is, in my opinion, a healthy thing to want. The other kind of criticism and comments that I was seeing was that she was coming off as being quite negative, a Debbie Downer. And that's why she wasn't successful in pursuing romantic relationships. This comment is a bit of a double-edged sword and it's almost like, damned if you do, damned if you don't. And I feel like sometimes as black women, we just can't win. I do agree that it's healthy to have a positive mindset. I will agree with the critics that Stephanie was coming off as being negative in that respect. However though, I'm going to give her some grace and some level of compassion because what I could see was a woman that has gone through quite a bit of trauma in terms of relationships and that's led to her mindset and her thinking this way. I see her as a victim of consequences and circumstances that has happened to her. I'm sure when she was a teenager going through all of this, she didn't choose for people to treat her in a certain way. So she's come out and she's 37 having had a lifetime 
of bad experiences with dating is it any wonder that she's saying these things you could see that this is somebody that wants to give the best of herself but through life knocking her down through relationships not working out she's ended up in this certain way so i'm wanting to extend some grace and some compassion towards her because these are the words of somebody that's hurting and is coming off negative rather than somebody that's made a conscious choice just to be negative it feels like as a society we're much more comfortable when people are telling us everything is great they're good they're good they're good but we're not as receiving when people say well actually i had a time or actually this was terrible or this something bad happened to me we only want to hear positive things and negative things we just kind of put a mental block on it also gives me the feels of we're now blaming victims rather than the people that victimize them the burden is on her to fix her negativity and to kind of snap out of it the news flash is that you can be sympathetic to somebody's experience while still having your view about what happened and yes if people were careless or they made bad decisions that led to them being in a particular situation yes fine we can be open and address that but i just feel like we need to have more tact more empathy and compassion when we're talking to each other then we branch off into the whole kind of worms that's to do with black women dating colorism living in la and to that i say exactly i feel like this is a topic in and of itself much more credible people have come before me and i've said much more in detail about this topic yeah it's a big mind my views about it is just So then other people have tried to be helpful and suggested that she can improve her dating prospects by putting more effort and investing into her appearance. And this is where I come in as a cosmetic doctor because I see women that have tried to level up their appearance and make changes. I am all in favor of self-improvement. It's really important to continue to work on a physically healthy, that you look after your skin, you look after your body, you exercise, you eat right, and investing into self-care. However, there is a danger when it goes unchecked. You should be first and foremost doing all of this for yourself to improve your self-image, your self-esteem, improve your confidence, and then this success in romantic relationships is secondary and should come along as a side effect of all of that. I would never advise any woman out there to go and get any procedure, non-surgical surgery, even just getting a facial purely because she wants to appeal to more men. She should do it because that's what she wants to do, that's what she feels good doing and if none of that is the case she has no business anywhere near a knife or having any sort of procedure she needs to be right here before she starts fixing external things what can happen is that if you're chasing this perfection body goals external validation goals is that you will never be happy and we see this play out time and time again we've seen celebrities like chloe kardashian that have just gotten on this hamster wheel of never ending surgery and the truth is that no amount of nip and tuck will fix and correct poor self image poor self esteem although i agree with the advice to stephanie that she might want to consider improving her appearance she should only do that if she wants to not because it's a surefire way to get herself a man because that never works and it's a recipe for disaster the other thing that she said in the video that i took some issue with was about her not going out with her more conventionally attractive friends or that she would only go out with them in specific situations I will be honest and say that I found this part worrying and it was quite sad when I heard her say it. This is the part that I would say to Stephanie if she happens to be watching this video that I think you need to do some more work in this aspect. 
when you do center yourself on yourself and you're not doing things purely out of external validation and you start to kind of back away from that idea of seeking external validation it doesn't matter and it shouldn't matter who you're going out to dinner with or who you're going to the club with or who you're going to the library with you are you regardless of who you're with and where you are she does have a lot more work to do in terms of processing her experience and working through it and hopefully coming out the other end having a much more healthy approach to friendships especially female friendships because it's touching on this element of competition which is not helpful it's not productive and it's not conducive to a good friendship because you're always competing with each other and friendships should be collaborative it shouldn't be competitive if you've liked this video let me know by giving me a thumbs up that would be really much appreciated and consider subscribing if you are new to my channel or you're not yet subscribed as ever i hope you are all staying safe and well in these times and i'll see you next time bye